Uh, two things happen in the garden. One is it's personal. It's a reflection of you and you cannot control it. Right. I mean, the, the thing about a garden is if you want to control it, good luck. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is every one of your senses comes alive in a garden. And not necessarily because of what you've done. Mm -hmm. and it's not something you can create, which is what you try to do with a landscape. And this happened to me in a garden because for the first time I started to breathe different. Even, even when you said that, I had that sense of breathing. Um, a shift in breathing, even when you say that. I mean, because it must have happened to you with art, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. was, there a I mean, was there a time, for example, in your life when you saw art as a space or a metaphor, not only for spiritual direction, but for your own spiritual journey? I think it began, as I think most of what happens for us begins in something experiential. I found that when I was doing art, it was prayer, and there wasn't a separation from that. Um, when they asked us to think about a metaphor. What I realized was 20 years ago, Spiritual Directors International gave me a metaphor. Um, they asked me to create um, a talk about spiritual direction as a work of art, and I hadn't ever thought about, about it formally. And what I began to realize was my experience of being in spiritual direction or being a director um, is a creation, and it's a work of art, and it shares in what art is. And um, some of what happens in a work of art is that you're engaged in seeing. And when so that's the senses again. Yes. And one right. of the things I was thinking when you were talking about the garden, like right. we learn a lot as spiritual directors about listening, and we're very serious about listening. Yeah. But we don't realize how much seeing comes into spiritual direction and the, the contemplative, creative gaze. And I think that's what I resonate with when you, when you describe, you know, the organic growing and movement in a garden. So as an artist, in any kind of art, seeing is one of the things that we as directors and that I think we as artists are um, in the process of. There's, uh, yeah. there's just two more things and then I think you can tell me about this in the garden. Yeah. When you're doing a work of art, you lose sense of time. Well, and that's, that's good. And that's what happens in direction. And when you're doing a work of art, you have to learn all the rules but then for it to be art, you've got to let go of all the rules, and you have to forget the rules. And that's when grace enters in, and I think that's what happens in direction. Now I'm sure you can well, parallel that, that. Yeah. But Charlie Parker says the very same thing about mm -hmm. jazz. Mm -hmm. He says, you, first, you, first of all, you have to learn right. uh, the notes. Mm -hmm. And then you forget all that stuff exactly. and just play. Exactly. Which is a part of what happens in the garden. Yes. And let's go back to the scene thing because here's what's interesting for me, yeah. using the garden as a metaphor. A lot of times what I'll do then is I'll go to the garden expecting to see what I want to see mm -hmm. or expecting to see it a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then when it surprises me is when the real yeah. work begins or the real spiritual direction begins. Exactly. But there has to be that time when I'm, when my own sense of mm -hmm. what I want to, it's like controlling the art. Mm -hmm. My own sense of what I want to create here or right. see here. Right. Uh, May Sarton, American poet, says, I spend the first 20 minutes of every morning in my garden looking for miracles. Uh -huh. yeah. But that's the seeing thing. Yeah. But what I have found, and maybe it's true for you, mm -hmm. I have found that usually the miracle is not where I was looking first. Right. And I think when we're trying to think about how does imagination fit into all of that, that's, that's part of it. It's like you come, you're not using your imagination, your imagination begins to use you. It's like, it's like the revelation and you are willing to be open to receive that and, and be surprised. What I love when I have some, because I literally walk people through my garden or we sit or whatever we do, but it, it's in the physical space of the garden. It's not in an, chairs, it's not in an office, it's not in a building. Mm -hmm. And what I love is when that moment happens for someone, mm -hmm. where they literally let down <sighs> yes. and they breathe. Yeah, exactly. And something, it's not the light bulb, but something opens. Yeah. And the imagination part for me goes back to the verb seeing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because imagination really is about seeing. But it's a different kind of imagination because we live in a world, like I said, about landscaping where imagination is just Disneyland. Okay, that's imagination, <laughs> but it's also scripted imagination. Yeah, right. You know, it's only a certain kind mm -hmm, of imagination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can only enjoy it <laughs> from here to here. <laughs> yeah, and, and not beyond. Yeah. That's enough yeah. enjoyment. Yeah. And so it's the same thing that happens in a garden. Mm -hmm. 
when someone goes yeah. and the imagination begins because they see many things. I mean, they see the space differently. They, they, they see themselves in the world differently. They see their relationship to the divine differently. Mm -hmm. They see that part of the sacred that is within them differently. Mm -hmm. And they carry, them, they carry themselves differently. One of the things you had said earlier, and I, I thought that was really important, that sometimes the invitation um, can cause discomfort. It's, it isn't always comfortable. And you'll, you'll be with the person and they'll be beginning to experience something that is more authentic or that is freer. And because, because they're, they're at that edge, you know, perhaps of discovery or perhaps of um, who knows what the invitation would be beyond that. That it's not always like, ah, oh, this is so wonderful. It can be a, it can be really a moment of, um, of discomfort and dis, dis ease in terms of... Um, what's, th what's the discomfort from? I think it's the unknown. It's like I'm... I'm I haven't been I'm there before. Exactly. This I'm is a new place I'm for me. I'm comfortable right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm an adult. Yeah. I have learned a certain way. Exactly. I have mastery. I know where I am and you're putting me in a new... You're putting me in a new landscape and I don't know how to do this. My first spiritual director was a Benedictine monk years and years ago. And uh, I was a young clergyman and of course mastery was very important to me. And so I wanted to do spiritual direction. Perfectly. Correct? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> wonderful. I was gonna. I was gonna get a good Perfectly. grade. I was gonna get a yes. good grade at this. Yes. And and it, and it's even the way I talked about it afterwards, mm -hmm. or what I was expecting someone to ask me. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good session? Yes. Yeah. As yeah. if. Yeah. I had to measure it against something. Right. And the same thing happens, and that's the breakthrough for me. You don't ask that in a garden. I tell people. Do you want me to show you a great garden? Mm. You find a gardener who's delighted to be there. Mm. That's a great mm. garden. Mm -hmm. It's not about a picture you've seen. It's not about a book that you have read mm -hmm. that gives you the five things. It's about the delight mm. that emanates from the inside of someone who's thrilled to be alive. I find creativity works best at those places where we're blocked. Um, and it's only an invitation and the person must maintain that freedom to move forward or to open up or not. But a question like, what might it look like if, uh, can frequently um, unleash a lot of imagination and creativity from, from the person's own experience. Were we to ask people how many people are contemplatives, that it's... Perfect it's, it's the Great sense question. of, I'm afraid to claim that. I'm afraid to, cl and I mean, I don't mean I'm afraid. I mean that people are afraid to claim creativity. They're afraid to claim um, the mystic aspect of life, which um, is natural. And I think that's what you're describing when you said, I felt more Terry in the garden. You know, it's like, it's a mystical experience um, that we need to be able to, to trust more. And I think that's, I think that's the other um, gift that spiritual direction gives people, that there's, there's a way to come to trusting more uh, the giftedness. And I think that, that for me, when I talk about work of art, I mean that creativity, that there's, there's a giftedness that people shy away from and that I think direction can lead more and more to that core. And, and God is creative. That's the first thing we learn about God, you know, that this God creates. Yeah. So as I get closer to that, I get closer to the divine.